Hello everyone, it is the video you've been waiting for, my actual now top investments for artifacts in the season 3 or season 2 if you want to call it of Super Server 1. So stay tuned for all of my opinions and choices for the best artifacts to be invested in in Call of Dragons season 1 and onwards. Hello, so yes, we're going to go over everything, in my opinion, in the best investments for Season 1 artifacts that you can be choosing if you're a low spender for your account. Especially if you're a free-to-play, I'm going to go over everything as well. But as well, there's some artifacts that you do need to be a low spender for because it is going to cost you some gems to go into, right? So if you're looking for the best investment choices for the game and what you can be investing in each season, this is your guide. So if you want more Call of Dragon guides and any informational videos, smash a like, comment and subscribe to the channel. I am Mr. Sneaky, an official Call of Dragons content creator for the game. And I'm here to supply my depth of knowledge so far of playing the game. We've hit over 250 videos. I've been over 190 days plus playing this game day in and day out. So we have a big, big brain of knowledge sponged and soaked ready to spew out to you guys, right? So here we are. We're going to be talking everything about these artifacts today. What I think you should be investing in as well as my investments as well. So we're going to go over actually some that I don't own and we're going to go over these first because there's some about free to play players I don't feel like you should be investing in. So for example, this Visage of Sanctus at the moment, any free to play player shouldn't be investing in. This Wolf one is an amazing investment if you're trying to be a cavalry player due to the new cavalry change. If you do see this in your low spender and you're trying to find something for your cavalry unit, this is actually a really powerful artifact to get now due to the cavalry change. So do keep an eye out on this one. But when we come to the others, we don't want to be looking at the staff. We don't want to be looking at the blood banner. We don't want to be looking at the breath of forest. We don't want to be even looking at Kingslayer. And we don't want to be looking at Spring Feather. The others, what you could use is Springs of Silence. However, I think there's better choices out there right now. But it is a cool artifact to use. You could also use Storm Barrows. This is another blink ability. So you could run two cavalry marches and have two blinks. A really effective tool to have. Just note the Wolf of Woman is way stronger than the Storm of Arrows. So that's why I do recommend getting this over the Storm right now. But the Breath of the Agantis is a really premium investment that we're going to go over later. But this is one I do not own right now. But we're going to talk about it in the mage section so when we come to investments we've got to talk about actual marches because the thing is with artifacts as you guys might have noticed a lot of artifacts do tailor towards certain unit types and because of that they do send, tend to have a purpose so as you can see the dragon scale armor is an infantry and tank pvp usage of an artifact allowing you to use it very flexible on your march it grants you a big shield and a cool 10 percent attack buff right but when we look at something like the the gray one gray mile warhammer we have a four man aoe stun absolutely brutal cc effect but again it is for infantry pvp control so you have a few options to go for and this is obviously go go even further when we look down in the epics right so we have even like butcher's blade as well as giant's bone which is the starting artifact that you can obtain also, I would consider Potion of Vigor a artifact for infantry because infantry are the best engineers in the game. They have the highest engineer rating that you can run. So when it comes down to destroying and building stuff, actually something like this is actually really cool to use. So we're going to go over that also. But then obviously we have the blues and the best blue that we know of is the Harlequin Mask. So again, we're going to go over that for infantry. But as you can see, everything has a purpose with artifacts, right? So when it comes to investment choice, it is going to be also down to your choice, guys. So when it comes to PvP, I'm going to go over the best investments for PvP. But if you're looking for the best investments for raiding, obviously I'm going to go over those two. Because there's two different categories and there's two different artifact choices that you could be going for. So just remember that. 
So if you enjoyed this video so far, smash a like, comment and subscribe to the channel. And with all that intro and all the information started, let's go into it. So for me, the best investment so far I have made in the game has been Shadow Blades. This is one of the strongest artifacts I believe the archers can be running. The reason is, is because of the absurd amount of damage this offloads. A 3600 skill damage that you can get and it's opened really easily through gold keys and you can get it through the daily rune system which is the monthly pass or the seasonal pass that you do every day for your objectives. It allows you to level this up really fast, right? And it is an exceptional artifact. It's great in PvP and, which is amazing, it's even better in raids. In raids, it is the best artifact for archers because it gives you the most amount of stats as well as the best damage dealt as you need for an archer match as well as this nuking ability. However, when it comes to the second best artifact, in my opinion, to invest into and it is something a low spender could be going for is Viola's Bow. Even a level 1 Viola's Bow or 2 even doing 2000 damage is enough. The reason is in PvP this is king, allowing you to delay any of your enemies that has been hit and it hits up to 5 of your enemies with a 10 second cooldown. So this means it when they've got their artifact, even if they've got their Viola's bow ready, if yours hits them first before they get to launch it, it means they have to wait 10 seconds and then they can fire. This could make and break it between some matches with some artifacts, for example, the Drake's Dragon Scale Armor. Obviously, if I delay the infantry by 10 seconds, he might not gain the shield which he needs to survive the combat, which is very, very effective again when killing units in PvP. So when it comes to the actual rankings for investments, in my opinion, this is always going to be one of your best investment choices for the archers. A secondary choice is always going to be Viola's bow. But let's move on to the epics because we do have some epics to talk about. You start with the Bomb Flinger and you do gain access to the Heart Piercer as well as the Manual which is up here when we click the right one. And all of them are free epics that can be viably used. However, for my choice and my opinion, you always get Bomb Flinger maxed out. And the cool thing with Bomb Flinger is it has a 2400 damage nuke on it. Which means even if you have a maxed out Bomb Flinger, you will be doing more damage than your early game Shadow Blades, as you can see. Even a level 2 Shadow Blades isn't as good as a Bomb Flinger. So remember that if you have a maxed out Epic, it's gonna out range or out DPS this. So if you're looking for investment choice, remember if you've got your Bomb Flinger from the start, you're good to go for raids. And then when you're leveling up your Shadow Blades, if it hits level 3 around mine, you're good to go. You can use this artifact instead of your Bomb Flinger, right? But another choice you could run is Heart Piercer. And this serves a similar purpose to the one of Viola's Bow. Instead of doing that cast of delaying your artifact by 10 seconds, it does reduce the enemy's defense by 15%. Obviously, it's a chance-based Artifacts, but when you max it out and have a 65% chance, it is quite devastating when you're hitting a unit with this and it does break through, allowing you to single target burst them and kill them even quicker. So this is also a really good investment choice to have in the early game, but when it does come to the archer's manual, I would personally avoid this one. I would not waste any XP so far. Maybe later on when you do have everything else done, this might be something you work on just to have it you know, completed for the account. But for actual usage, the other two epics are way better to use. And when we come to the blues, we don't really talk about these again, apart from the infantry choice, which we're gonna go over right now. So, if you're an infantry player, again, I wouldn't recommend it for free to play players, but if you are going for it and you're trying to be a tank coming, the best actual artifact that you can run for quite a long time is going to be the Harlequin's Mask. The reason is when you're in raids, this is the MVP. This is the S plus 
plus artifact that actually allows raids to perform the exact same way they would perform in a game like World of Warcraft, where the tank is actually taunting the behemoth to draw aggro and allow the DPS to freely hit without worry, which is a really great mechanic. This would be something that you will 4 star really quickly and every season you would be leveling this up to 40 to use every single raid. So remember that when you are using this as an infantry player, it is a very powerful effect to have and it's the only effect in the game and that's why it is a very powerful investment choice when it comes to the infantry units. However, when we look at some of the other choices like the Veterans Diary, this might help you just kill some patrols when you have it, but I would not use it. The same goes for the Butcher Blade. Okay, early games to help you kill those patrols when you're trying to peacekeep and level up, but I wouldn't use it. Again, the same for Giant's Bone. Good for early game patrols and trying to get their levels up, but I would not use it. So when it does come to inventory, you are actually kind of restricted down to these two artifacts and this is really good for pvp and so is this one allows you to be tanky and obviously it generate a shield that goes onto other units and gives them a great 10 percent physical attack buff this could be used as well in the raid to allow you to survive even longer and it gives you infantry legion hp the most premium stat you could ask for right the same as you could see on the viola's bow which i didn't really mention but another reason why this is just so good in pvp right but when you look at gray warhammer the Grey Man's Warhammer does a massive stun effect and this is actually really good when it comes to PvP. It allows you to lock down those four targets that might be surrounding you, allowing you to escape and more importantly allow your team behind you to kill them and focus them down for free so this is a really good investment choice i do like it and i do run it a lot it uses a lot of um time as well in the dragon trials you get to stun lock a load of the enemies and the you know the lizards and different star ratings that you go through this is a really powerful effect to have so i do recommend it even in the dragon trials it's good overall so as you can see the best kind of artifacts so far when we're talking about even shadow blades we're talking about violus bow and the gray warhammer they're all able to be used in pvp and some sort of raid scenario or the dragon trials right so they've got flexibility because that's what you want you want an artifact that you can use in multiple scenarios right for mages, as you can see, Phoenix Eye for me is always going to be king. It is a massive insane nuke that you get to put in PvP. One of the best in the game. Another one you could go for if you are the low spender is when we go down all the way to the bottom is Infernal Flame. I did mention it earlier. And again, this is a very powerful effect. It does a nice AoE damage burst that you can see that takes like one, two, three, for so it does like a nice bit of damage like that but the cool thing about this is it allows your magic units now when they deal that normal attack damage that they're not really great at to inflict scorch and scorch is a 200 based hero skill damage effect that is applied to the unit similar to the one which is attached to lilia right so if we go to lilia really quickly you gain this scorch mechanic now on any of your marchers and it, as you can see it is a magic damage factor of 200 when you hit it so it's a really powerful effect again in pvp it's going to be a really powerful effect as well when it comes to raids because now instead of doing just nuke damage like the phoenix eye does the infernal flame in fact gives you a bit more sustained damage with that scorch mechanic giving it a bit of an edge over the phoenix eye so if you can unlock that infernal flame and invest into it i would highly recommend it for a mage player but obviously for free to players we have some other choices and as you can see on here we rock the beautiful and it is such a great artifact magic bomb it uses the time bomb ability which it does detonate after eight seconds dealing up to 1800 damage obviously this scales even higher the higher troop count you have and your magic attack 
So remember, this is going to do some insane AoE on three nearby targets. And it's really good in every scenario. Again, PvP, PvE, it allows you to put it onto cavalry units that are running away. You will notice you can put it onto either maximum or other enemy mage units. And it allows you to, when they're trying to run away, you'll notice it's all in bundled up in the murder ball, allowing you to get some big free AoE hits. So it's a very, very powerful artifact in the PvP scenario. You see it all over the place. And it is basically like the poor man's version of the Phoenix Eye, right? But another artifact to talk about, again, you do start with this artifact. It is the style one you know the in, in wherever it is the incantation the advanced incantation here the reason why is again when we go to the skill rating this is over 2800 damage but it's only affects darklings and the behemoths right so when it comes to raids this is actually a lot stronger to bring because it's going to do a lot more damage than someone's phoenix eye as you can see it does over 800 more so you need a level 3 phoenix eye in order to have higher skill base damage factor than the you know the starter the starter artifact so just remember that so this is a very fine choice for investment would recommend it too if you're super free to play and you're looking for something to run specifically in raids only right you can use it obviously to level up on patrols but this does not work in pvp so don't use it right so now we're going to move on to some cavalry cavalry i think for me i've already gone over it but solan's blade is the mvp choice when we go down to the bottom we have the war month's mark and storm arrows two blink abilities are super powerful we're gonna start seeing this more often in the meta i believe once it develops due to the fact that when that cavalry unit blinks over and targets a range unit they're gonna be able to generate that 1000 rage factor and then instantly blink back home where they originally came from right so it's a very powerful effect to go for Solan's Blade, again, amazing to kill and do big bursts of damage. Use this every season so far with my cavalry. You could try, and if you're a low spender, get King Slayer, but this is more what I've used on whales, I've noticed, and the higher spenders, because you need it leveled up to get that big damage nuke to try and get the execute near the end, right? So I wouldn't really recommend this for cavalry at the moment, unless it becomes easier to obtain. So now we're going to just go over the final bits and these are the misconceptions or the, the miscellaneous artifacts that you should use. And that is going to be the Green Finger Sickle, the Potion of Vigor as well as Lucia's Horn, three of the best artifacts in the game. These allow you to farm super efficiently. The Lucia Horn allowing you to summon, as you can see from mine, a level 7 tile and it's super free to play friendly to get because you can get all of these artifacts all the way out here when you look and press f and you go to search here we go like if we press it correctly and we find one of these chests right so these chests here allow you to get the lucy's horn as well as the sickle as well as the final artifact that i'm going to talk about at the end of the video which is the best merit farming part but these two allow you to farm considerably well for your march obviously there's going to be other artifacts that you're going to gain on screen right now like the gems that can be fine at level 10 this allows you to farm a little bit more because the load cap again the green finger sickle though giving you that load cap but more importantly when you trigger it gives you that mass amount of resources right so this is why investments especially when it comes to farming you can actually get these farmer artifacts just just to level 10 i've tried to go to level 20 i'm not liking it level 10 is fine but these ones are always going to stay generally one star never any higher but it allows you to farm really 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 effectively right so now the final artifact that i did mention is the cloak of stealth this thing is amazing it gives you legion attack when you do max it out with the star rating so if we go over and we click as you can see and now at four stars you get that damage taken reduction which is insane but this legion attack buff is so good because this artifact for cavalry is amazing i've left it at the end because the why the reason why it is 
if you've not watched it, I've got a free merit guide, right? And what you can do is on screen as it showcases, your cavalry can go invisible. And what you can do is go into the enemy territory, find those farming tiles that they're farming on and just kill them and run them down, right? And just absolutely get some amazingly high score and merits. And that's why this is towards the end of the video, because again, I feel this is more resource based, similar to the other gathering tools. It's a really powerful PVP tool, but it's used to gain merits what, that you spend to buy some stuff, right? So that is gonna be my investment choices. I'm gonna do a quick summary right now because I have probably overloaded you guys with a load of information, but the best archer ones to go for is definitely gonna be Shadow Blades and Violos Bow. If you're going for free to play options, it's definitely Heart Piercer and Bomb Flinger. If you're a mage player, we're going for the Phoenix Eye or the Infernal Flame, but we don't have access to it right now. But if you're, again, a free to play player, you can be rocking the Magic Bomb or the Incantations right here. If we're a Cavalry player, we're gonna be rocking Solan's Blade or the Coke of Stealth. Really powerful abilities to have on both of your Cavalry units, so do use them when you get them. And then finally, when it comes to the infantry units, I would always recommend Grey Warhammer or the Dragon Scale Infantry Armor. But as well, if you are infantry main, a must investment always every season is going to be Harlequin's Mask. So you can fulfill your role as a tank in the Raid Behemoth Raids, right? So that is it guys, that's my investment choices for all the artifacts. If you're looking for an artifacts guide, remember I do have that out. Check out the channel, it has all the guides you're going to need for new players. All, everything is explained nice and thoroughly through as I've just done kind of in this investment video. So if you've enjoyed it, smash a like, comment and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell for all of your Call of Dragon videos when they come out. And that is it. That is going to be it. I hope you enjoyed it. So until the next video, stay safe, stay sneaky, and peace out, guys.